Hi, I'm Pox. Couch Guy. And you're watching the Two Smart Guys Show, where we bring you blocky, pixelated video conferencing tech news every week. <laughs> because my internet connection sucks, and I'm not willing to pay for more. <laughs> and uh, I'm uh, too lazy to change the background. We've had this iPhone background for uh, two weeks, two three weeks now. <laughs> That's funny. But um, yeah, I just want yeah, to. Sh- why change your name broken? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I wanted to show you guys this cool little toy that I got, uh, or piece of software that I got for a Kinect. It's real time, well, I don't know about real time, but it's 3D scanning. I mean, it does this, the scanning in real time. I guess you can't really move. You have to have something stationary, but it can be a person. They can just hold still. You can move the camera around the person, or you can throw them on a lazy Susan, and you can you know, just rotate them in front of the camera. You can also set like um, the distance that you want it to scan. You could just scan a whole room. So you could go in to a room and scan the whole room, kind of like um, what they did for the Avengers in New York City, just uh, in real time and not as high def. <laughs> so uh, tell me, uh, you, you can hold the connect and you can actually physically move it around and it knows its place in 3D in space? Yes, because it's taking the geometry and it's tracking the geometry that it's scanning in real time. So gotcha. it's, it's actually pretty impressive, really. The, um, the geometry that it picks up is very detailed. So this is truly, and I, I, I'm not much of a 3D guy, and I, I don't, I've never really gotten into that software, but I know you have. This is like a 3D guy's, like, what dream? Oh, yeah. This is, I mean, this is amazing. This is the... So, hypothetically, if you were someone who was in 3D, and you wanted to make your own self-made 3D thing, you could have your own custom action figure, scan it now with your Kinect, just so everybody in the world understands what we're talking about. Scan it with your Kinect. You assign the polygon location data for the armature, meaning the arms, legs, and movement. And then now you have a, basically, a full body representation of what would take you weeks, if not months, to build. Yeah, Is, am, I, am I yeah. capturing that in a way that makes sense? Yeah, yeah. So, like, if you're doing, like, quick um, effects and things, like, you needed a stunt double, a 3D stunt double, you just literally take your little laptop and a connector over there, scan them real quick, and then use it to animate them falling off a bridge or whatever. And um, the, other, the other software I want to show off next week, I think, is uh, real-time motion capture. They've got it working now with LightWave, so you can do facial motion capture with the Kinect, and it'll do real-time, um, like, the eyes, the mouth, the nose, the movement, every, the head, everything... Or, and or body tracking. And you can use more than one Kinect, so you could have one tracking the, the facial motion and you could have uh, one tracking the body. And it works pretty, pretty well. It's pretty impressive. When we were looking at this stuff at NAB, you know, 10, 15 years ago, it was like a million dollar thing, and now you can do it with 100, 200 bucks of Kinect and software and a compete in a, in a PC. <laughs> well, and how detailed does this um, end up getting? Because that's that's kind of the key to this, isn't it? Right? You, you said this software was special because it included some features, which I'll let you explain. Yeah. So, th- how detailed can you get on an object? So, if you're sculpting something, is it going to like facial replacement and things like that that you would be doing with this if you scan a person? Yeah, so is this possible, or is it going to look hokey? No, it looks it looks it looks pretty good and. Really mapping the texture from the video onto the object isn't the best way of doing 3D graphics. Like if you if you really want to get detailed about it, you'll take the geometry and you'll you'll um, you'll go as far as creating textures for every little tiny hair and whatnot. So it, it does look kind of like a weird, you know, act, it looks like an action figure. You know, and when you're done with it, it looks like uh, you know a toy. <laughs> But it gives you a basis that you could refine and, and make better looking. Or, like I said, if it's for, for, for far shots and effects, it would it'd be perfect. Yeah, you could do people and do things like that. I just think about the things that you were doing with on the clipping plane. Yeah. And how much nicer life would have been had you been able to scan a little object that you already had and just put that little object into your, you know, even if it was just rudimentary, it's better than nothing. Yeah, like when we had our actors uh, falling through the sky and stuff, it would have been pretty easy just to scan them and then, like, th- throw them around in the the background and do horrible things to them without actually having to do it to the actors. 
So, and anyways, it's pretty cool. It, it keeps track of everything, so you can scan over multiple passes, and you can get more detail by the slower you go and the more you go over the object. It just takes longer yeah. to process it when it's done. And it's uh, GPU accelerated. This one here, this is just the one I'm showing right now. Is um, I think it's like 120 bucks for the full version, but there's the light version you can try for free. It just limits the amount of polygons you can export. So you can get um, like a video game resolution model out of it for free. Okay. Wow. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I just kind of wanted to show this off and let people know the technology's out there. I mean, it's, it's, it's here. We can, we can scan stuff and we can print it <laughs> in 3D now. So someone who's rather innovative. So you paid for this software. I just want to make sure that people understand that yeah. there's a difference between the software you pay for and the software you don't. Yeah, so uh, I have the hype. How much was it? What kind, of, what kind of features did you get? Like, give them the lowdown because this is the important part. Oh, so the lowdown is basically a geometry limit. So the free version, you can only put, I think, like 5,000 polygons, which isn't much. It's, it looks like a... You know, like a Nintendo 64 game graphic level. It's it's not very detailed. But you can see it and play with it. You just can't do anything with it. until you, and Once you export it, you just get the really low geometry stuff. So if you really want yeah. to use it, they want you to buy it. And yeah. there are a bunch of them out there that are free, but they don't export to the 3D program that I use, or they don't do the textures in real time. And you, like, you wanted the textures. That was yeah. one of the big deals. So the big deal is I wanted the textures and I wanted something that I could export to the software package. To your program. So yeah, I use Lightwave 3D. So that's... Um, and I, I, I'm not totally sure. It, it, it doesn't export directly to Lightwave, but it, it goes to a format that Lightwave can handle. So it's like... It's the intermediate yeah. format. Yeah. Well, that's cool. And, then, you know, this is, a, this is kind of a poor man's version of the things that they were doing in... Um, Lord of the Rings is probably the one that comes to mind, the most recent, you know, as far as having lots of models that we're doing, maybe not even just actor replacement, which you were talking about, but doing buildings and doing just scenery replacements where they they had a, you know, a castle or an object that they were scanning and putting into place, you know, because it was originally a model. Yeah, so, so you, you can scan your props or whatever, and you could destroy them digitally versus real, like a car. Yeah. <laughs> and it would be that exact car from that set with the same, you know, lighting and texture. Every time. Yeah. So it'd Every be... time. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, post in the comments below what you think. Is this, is this the, the next revolution, 3D scanning and printing, and, uh, or is it just eh? It's kind of for the home user, this is a big deal for the home user. This is not something new to, to video or things like that, but for the home user, this and it's right with the Connect. So yeah, and apparently the next Connect is uh, got significantly higher resolution for everything and accuracy. Do you think Do you think that Sony will allow the same kind of uh, modding to their 3D scanner that you know that basically Windows is allowed to theirs? I don't know if they're going to allow it, but it's going to happen. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just saying, like, because Connect, that was the first thing they did. Is they're like, oh, use it. Here's the, here's the whole whiz bang. Yeah, Microsoft did the right thing. Everybody was hacking it, and so they kind of did the right thing. They sold a Connect for Windows version, which cost, like, $230. And it, they, they rewrote their SDK, so now you can't use the Connect for 360 with the new APIs and stuff for the Connect for Windows, which is kind of, I don't know, that's kind of rotten of them, but. It's, Making more money. Yeah, that's, that's just Microsoft for you. <laughs> but they, they supported people hacking it and, and doing stuff with it initially, and kind of, they made it a separate version for Windows. Um, like the Lightwave version only works with the, the one for Windows because of the libraries and stuff it uses. Well, it's Windows. It's Windows. You know, let's be honest. It's, but it's cool because, you, you know, as we talked about early, early years ago when the Kinect came out and this topic came up, was that people were are now using this device far outside of Oh, the yeah, we platform. saw the first hacks come out, and we, were, um, we did some stuff with it, and we knew this would come someday, and it's, it's here. I mean, and it probably has been for a little while, but I just came across it 
Yeah. Um, I've seen it myself. used in uh, a lot of robotics lately with uh, proximity sensing and things like that with robotics getting uh, communication feedback in three-dimensional space, and it's a really simple way for the engineers to integrate sight, in a sense, to a, you know their robot. Oh, yeah. Anyways, uh, post in the comments below what you think, and uh, please subscribe to our feed. We're here every week, every Monday. we got a new show. We try and do live shows on Wednesdays at 8.30 Mountain Standard Time. So, well, We're trying to see how terrible I look before we stop <laughs> using me. All right. Uh, see you guys next week. Goo. Boo. Goo. Blah. Goo. Come out and play! Uh, like when they do music videos and, and there's a beat and it kind of goes blurry, like, you know, like, like with the bass. Like, you know, like, What is that? Okay, where is it saying? If you don't understand how it's a huge deal, start watching all the videos. Another game save exploit. Cool thing about this one is it works with all PCs across the board. For the fear of Harry Gary Peter Talk. I know I could get at least 5,000 down the street. Yeah. Looks soggy to me. Yes, it's alive. I'm Yago. I'm Couch Guy. Hi, I'm Box. And I'm Ragable. Pretty cool stuff, huh? What? And where can you find that? You better go wait outside. We don't, we don't want any trouble.